Using external sense with logic can be really challenging, and it's taken me a long time to develop the right workflow to number one, get it all working, but use it in a creative and helpful way that doesn't take more time than it has to. Today, I'm gonna break down my entire synthesizer workflow with Logic Pro. I'm gonna show you how to physically route things, how to patch things, what settings you need to hit, and give you some practical advice on how to actually use synths in a helpful way in your workflow. The first thing you need to do is physically connect all your synths or synth, whatever you're using. It needs to be physically connected to your computer. To do this properly, you need a few things. You need a computer. You need a synth with some sort of MIDI in and out. Uh, it could be 5-pin MIDI, could be like the 3.5 millimeter MIDI, could be USB, but you need some way to get MIDI in and out of the synthesizer. You'll also need an audio interface and the cables that you would need to connect your synth to your audio interface. In most cases, that's gonna be quarter inch cables, and probably two of them if you're running stereo. And then finally, you'll need whatever form of connection type you're using to connect your synth to your computer. So if your synth has the five pin MIDI ports, you need five pin MIDI cables. And if your synth has like a USB type A, like the printer size plug, then you need that. If you don't have those things, pause the video, Go find them or order them on Amazon or whatever you need to do and then resume. So step one, you're gonna to want to connect your synth to your computer via those MIDI connections. If your synth has the USB connection and that's what you wanna use, then put one side of the USB into the synth and connect the other side directly to your computer. If your synth has the five pin MIDI, then you'll need to connect those two MIDI cables to your synth and then either to your audio interface or to some sort of MIDI interface that'll get that MIDI to your computer. Uh, most audio interfaces should have MIDI ports on the back, at least a majority of them do. If not, you can probably pick up a cheap MIDI interface to connect those to your computer. Step two, you're gonna wanna patch the audio output of your synthesizer into your audio interface. So same strategy as if you were recording any keyboard, you're gonna take those audio outputs, either mono or stereo, whatever you want, get those plugged into your audio interface. So that is the physical connections. Now we're going to hop into Logic and set up that side, and then we'll, get, we'll be getting there. The first thing we need to do in Logic is create a new MIDI instrument. So we're gonna come hit the plus button right here to add a new track, and then go down to MIDI. Where you see MIDI, make sure that's selected and click External MIDI. Um, so there's gonna be a lot of things for you to look at right here. Um, so you do want to use the external instrument plugin that makes it really easy to figure everything out. Next, under MIDI destination, this is wherever you have plugged the MIDI cables of your audio interface. A lot of things, if they're USB MIDI, might just show up in this menu. That's the best case scenario. Also, if it's plugged into your audio interface via the five pin MIDI cables, you'll wanna select your audio interface from this menu. Um, so for now, I'm gonna work with the base station. Again, it's behind me, plugged in via USB. And I'm gonna hit all for now and we'll we'll get into MIDI channels in a minute. And then you want to select an audio input. So wherever that audio output from your synth was plugged into your audio interface, whatever channel you chose, that's what you're gonna wanna select here. So for me, I'm in input 15. It's gonna be, that. that's gonna be whatever you set on your end. And then here, the audio output can be your stereo output, keep that simple, and then go ahead and hit create. So now we have a new instrument track here. If you hit I to open the side panel, you'll see we have a software instrument track, but instead of selecting a plugin or something like you normally would, there's this external instrument setting there. At this point, you should be able to reach over and play something on your synth and hear it back. And that's the first little win we have today. Great, so that is now coming in, coming from our synth into this new track here. So we'll call this new bass station. So this is where it starts to get a little confusing. This is technically a MIDI track, a software instrument. So what that means is the channel behaves based on MIDI information. However, what you're hearing back is not MIDI, it is audio from your synth. So if I were to hit record, you're not gonna see audio come through on this track. You're gonna see MIDI. So I'll go ahead and show you that. Little tasty bass riff there for you. Um, okay, so we recorded and we got MIDI. And if you double click this, it behaves just like MIDI. But when I hit play again, you're gonna hear it again. Let me quantize it. Okay. 
Okay, so we recorded some MIDI. When we hit play, we hear it back. But what does that actually mean? How does that affect your workflow? The beauty of this is you can perform on your synth, right? And then you're inevitably going to mess up at some point or decide you want something else. Um, and so you can change things later. So let's say we want this to happen again. It's actually, it's actually pretty good. Um, now we've just adjusted our MIDI and it replays on the synth every time. To take this a step further, we can record in MIDI CCs. So a lot of times on synthesizers, the knobs and things already have CC information with them. And so, especially on modern synths, I don't know about older if you have a vintage synth, but on anything newish, all these knobs are going to record MIDI CC information. So I'm reaching behind me and I'm just turning the big filter knob on the synth here. And you can see in Logic, it is receiving MIDI information from that. So what that means is I can hit record and change, physically change that knob and record those changes as well. So I'm going to do that now. So now we've actually recorded that filter movement onto the MIDI as well. And so you could do this with any number of layers, any number of things. It's important to know that certain synths actually have a setting that will toggle whether or not they transmit those CC messages. Um, and so if you're not able to get that working, dive into the manual of your synth and see if there's something in the global settings that'll let you change that. For me, the base station worked right out of the box, but I have an Archeria Mini Freak that I had to go menu diving and find the transmit MIDI CC. But once you set it, it's usually good and you, you can you know do your thing from there. You might be in a situation where maybe your synths are all somewhere far away in your studio and you want to be able to play them from your regular MIDI keyboard. This is where the MIDI channel starts to come in. So if I come over here to my base station external instrument and MIDI channel. All right, so I have set each synth in here, all, all two of them on their own MIDI channel. Um, so the base station I know is MIDI channel three. And so same thing, you might need to look into settings on your synth to see what MIDI channel you're using. But once I set this specifically to MIDI channel three, I can play it on my, you know, my, my key station on my desk. And that makes it way easier because I don't have to keep reaching over there to, you know, do the thing. Another way I really like to use this is for sound design because it can be a pain when you're trying to play on your synth and dial in a sound at the same time. So a lot of times I'll program out the MIDI that I think I want the synth to play, at least something close enough, and then loop it with the cycle range here, just uh, kind of drag along the area you want. And then it'll keep looping and you can actually just go tweak your synth in real time. The other cool thing about setting it up this way is you can use any number of MIDI effects within Logic. So if I just pull up the arpeggiator, for instance, and it's that easy. And then we're triggering that synth like an arpeggiator would in real time. And the other cool thing you could do on the back end is add whatever effects you want. Um, so let's see, let's throw in, it doesn't super matter right now. So you can add effects right there. And it's really a super cool hybrid way to work because I'm not limited to just my external gear, but I'm able to tie in my external gear with Logic. And this does work with multiple synths. So my micro cord, for instance, I also have that set up right here. And I can record it, same thing. The only difference with this one is I connected it via 5-pin MIDI. So instead of selecting the synth in the dropdown, I selected my interface there. And then you do need to be a little bit more specific with MIDI channel here because especially for daisy chaining, you, you're going to get in a mess. So my micro Korg is MIDI channel 2, and then I'm able to... And then you can, same type of workflow, 
hit record right over top of it. It gives you an idea. Um, and now both of these will be playing back live. This song is terrible, by the way. Please don't uh, judge me in the comments for my song. Um, so that's the idea there. And then I want to show you what you can do when you're done, because this is not a state I like to keep it in. Uh, because you're reliant on hardware having the same patches and all of that kind of stuff. So as soon as I'm solidified on the parts and the sounds and everything, I like to do what's called commit that and go ahead and record it to audio. So what you need to do is create new new tracks, uh, track or tracks, whatever your situation is. Um, so I'm going to create one for the base station here, a mono track from, where is it? Here. And then create. And then I'll call this base station record or whatever. And then I'm going to make another one for the micro Korg. Same thing, come here, come here. I need to relabel some of these. Okay. And this is micro Korg. Now, if I arm these, that's not the right thing, this one. So if you did that right, you should see what's going on. And I would recommend not hitting input monitoring if you do this, because then you'll hear two of them, basically. Uh, so leave input monitoring off, go back to the beginning, and go ahead and hit record, and sit back. Great. And then, you know, let any tails you have in there die out. And now we've recorded those. You can mute your original MIDI and now you have that committed to audio. The only thing you might need to do is move over any effects you had on the channels because that doesn't record. So I'll just come over here and move this over to my base station for that weird base delay. So hopefully that's given you some ways that you can use external MIDI instruments within Logic Pro very easily and very efficiently. If you have any questions about this topic, please let me know down in the comments. I can always do another video or just answer your question. Also, if you'd like to pick up my free hotkey guide, I'll have that information down in the description. It's just a bunch of super helpful hotkeys that I use in Logic Pro every day. And so you can get it and print it off or keep it on your computer and reference it whenever you need to. Again, that's down in the description and you can check that out. With that said, thank you so much for watching and please make sure you like and subscribe if this was helpful. Thanks.